Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to have a quick look at this stuff, which is called Magic Gel. Now, this particular one is made by Raytech, but you can get uh, similar things from other manufacturers as well. That just happens to be the one we actually got here. And uh, what this is for is if you're going to do any connections, say, outside, where they like to get wet or water is like to get in there, then this stuff you can use to actually fill the box where the connectors are in, and this will prevent any water getting in there as it basically covers over the entire thing and uh, obviously prevents any moisture getting in and things going rusty and shorting out and whatever. And you can actually remove this afterwards as well, so it's not a permanent sort of stuff, unlike sort of resin or something, which would of course seal it in permanently. So ideal way you're going to sort of put things in there, prevent them getting wet or whatever, but still have the ability to remove them afterwards or make adjustments and alterations at a later date. So this is what you get here, basically it's two bottles, and this is the 300 size, which basically is 300 millilitres. So uh, obviously other sizes are available. And uh, what you have to get inside are these two bottles. Uh, two of the same size, one's white and the other one is blue. And it's the same amount of each. Now I've actually used a fair amount of this already. This is just some sort of residue from uh, some other job which was done earlier last week. And uh, the deal is that you mix these two together in equal amounts. So uh, same amount of the blue and the white. And uh, in this state, as you can see, there are obviously just liquids. The blue one is uh, a bit thicker, but it's still a uh, sloppy liquid. And once these have been mixed up, literally within sort of five, ten minutes, they will turn into a uh, rather robust gel, which is completely uh, waterproof and uh, stops any moisture getting in. And despite the appearance of these things, these do not have any water in either. So you can actually mix these up and tip them over the connectors and apply power straight away. And you could even tip it over live connectors if you want it, though uh, it's probably not recommended because of uh, live parts being exposed. Now the idea is that uh, when you've got your connector, I've just got this uh, example piece here, this will be in some kind of enclosure or box, so I've just got this uh, cup thing here just a demonstration. So you put them in there, make over whatever connections you've got, and then before putting the lid on you would just pour the uh, mixture of these two in there to cover it completely. And of course it sets up, then you can put the lid on, and then there's no way that water is going to get in there, and it's going to remain uh, completely uh, waterproof no damage of uh, corrosion or whatever else, and most importantly you're not going to get moisture in causing it to uh, track between the two things and cause a short circuit and basically destroy itself. So I'll just show you how this uh, does actually work. So I'll just demonstrate how this works. So basically you get the blue one and then pour in a, uh, a certain amount of it. The blue one is somewhat thicker than the uh, transparent version, so generally uh, do that one first. So that's some of the blue, and then it's just a question of adding the same amount of the white, or basically colourless uh, liquid, on the top. So, just add some of that to the same amount. And then it's just a question of uh, mixing that together for a uh, fairly short time. It only recommends a certain number of seconds on the uh, actual instructions there. Just basically get the two things mixed together and essentially what will happen to this is it will sort of cross link together and then form the actual gel substance so uh, that's pretty much uh, actually done and mixed now and as you can see there it is still a very liquid and uh, flowing type of material so i so say this is uh, not obviously a junction box but uh, you get the idea so once you've done your connections connectors go down in the bottom there and then you would simply pour this over the connections completely covering them like that and so even in that state you could apply a four mains voltage to that there's no uh, danger there i'll say this doesn't contain any water despite the fact it might uh, appear like a uh, watery type of liquid and i see at the moment it's still uh, obviously quite liquid but we'll wait a few minutes for that and then of course it should turn into the gel substance now I left this, so it's actually been about 10 minutes, so I left it whilst doing some other stuff there. And we can see that now it's not actually liquid, so it's not pouring out of the uh, container there. And it's turned into the uh, sort of gel type substance there. So, so it's completely encapsulated in there. No water, of course, can get in there. And it's totally uh, enclosed in this uh, sort of jelly-like substance. Now you may be wondering what sort of insulation resistance we're going to get between those two. So uh, let's just test that out right now. So I've got the uh, insulation resistance tester here, and all this is essentially what we had before, just the uh, two wires there going into that connector. So nothing on the other side, but of course it was testing between the two uh, parts of the connector at the bottom. So just uh, clip onto the appropriate uh, 
test leads here. So let's just see what we've got now. We're 500 volts with a normal uh, choice for voltage, but we're going to turn that up to 1000 just because we can. And let's see what kind of uh, interstitial resistance we get between these two items. So as you can see there, that's applying a test voltage of 1042 volts, and the resistance we're getting is greater than 1000 megohms, basically more than 1 gigohm, and uh, that's despite it being in this uh, what appeared to be a liquidy thing before, but of course hey, there's no water involved there, and it's a uh, completely insulating material. And the important thing here is this will actually stay like this pretty much forever, and of course if any water does get on this gel it's just going to sit there, it doesn't actually dissolve in water, so uh, no problem obviously if it does get a bit damp or wet. And even if this was buried underground in a box and some water got in, well again it's not going to do anything because again the gel is going to uh, prevent that getting in there. Now the final thing of course is uh, can you actually get it out of here? And of course yes you can because say the gel is relatively soft so if you poke the screwdriver you'll see it will uh, fix there. So if you had one of these you just wanted to open it and uh, adjust it or add some extra connections or whatever then you can get it out of there. You see it will pull out quite easily and then of course you can go in there and uh, alter the connections and do whatever you want to. And in terms of the actual gel itself, you can sort of hook some of that out of the pot there. So there it is, as you can see it does uh, come out relatively easily, it's sort of a uh, fairly soft and uh, malleable material, so you can actually reuse some of this if you want to uh, obviously put it back into the container you've got. And of course then we need to just fill over the top with some new uh, non-set version just to fill up any gaps or whatever that you have. But uh, it's quite a uh, say reusable type of material, but uh, say it is removable and you can uh, obviously remove it pretty easily. And I say that's no problem then just to redo the connection zone in whatever box you've got, so add an extra light or replace a light fitting or whatever. And uh, say this stuff is uh, pretty easy just to tear, say, with your fingers. So let's look there at some magic gel, and of course it's not magic really, it's just two chemicals which when mixed together form into sort of a uh, cross-linked polymer type of stuff. Completely waterproof, and as I saw there, totally insulating electrically as well. And it's a fairly expensive product, but on the other hand, uh, going back to somewhere three months later because it's all rusted out and corroded and having to dig about in someone's flower bed because the uh, connection box fell down and uh, not full of water, not exactly cheap either. So uh, well, we're considering if you're going to be doing anything outside, so sort of like outside lighting and that kind of thing where the box is fairly likely to get damp or wet. And the other option, apart from using that, is to, if you've got boxes say on the wall, is to put drainage holes in the bottom, so if any water gets in it will just drain away. But obviously that's not going to be practical in some cases if it's sort of low down near the ground or even buried underground. So that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.